Hey everyone, my name is Roy, and in today's recording, I'll be showing how you can use Steps in to create a GraphQL API from your REST API endpoints. For this, we'll be using some mock APIs I created, and also the API from the practical dev. So before getting started, make sure to create a new working directory, as I've done here, which is called REST example in this case, and make sure you're logged in into Steps in. And you can do this by running Steps in login. As I'm already logged in, I don't have to do this anymore. So the API I will be transforming today is a REST API, which we can first discover in Postman. So let me paste this one here, send it, and see what it looks like. So this is just your average REST API. It's called Customers. And it will give us a blob of information. Apparently, it's not formatting it nicely. Let's do it as JSON. As you can see, it is an array consisting of multiple objects with user information, like an address, order information, the name of the user. And using Stepsam, we can use this REST API endpoint to create a GraphQL API using just one command, which is, in this case, Stepsam import curl. And then we can just paste the command. And we don't have to do anything else here, as it doesn't have authentication, so I don't need a header. It's a GET request, so I don't need to specify any post body, you can just press enter. So this will start working for you. First, it will ask you to name the GraphQL API endpoint that will be deployed. As this is a fresh project, you'll need to install or you need to configure the REST API endpoint, which I will be calling API slash REST example. As you see, it's also saying steps and input curls a new feature, which is great, meaning We'll be adding much more features to it later on. And this has created multiple files. It has created a steps in config.json, which includes your GraphQL API endpoint. It's created an index.graphql file, which brings together all the GraphQL files we'll be creating in this project. For now, it's just curl index GraphQL, as we can see here. And this is where the true magic happens, because in this file, your GraphQL schema has been generated based on the REST API endpoint. You can see there are multiple types there, but scroll down to the query. It's created one query called my query, which is using the endpoint we just saw in Postman. And then it has all these different fields. You can see the address, uh, the orders, and also the root entry, which is the main, um, the main type or response type for this query. As you can see, all the information that we had in the REST API is still there. So it has fields for an address. It also has the name or the email of the user. And then the only thing I need to do after doing this is running steps and start to start the GraphQL API and deploy it on an endpoint. So this might take a couple of seconds. As you can see, it took four seconds and now my REST API endpoint is deployed. So I can go to this URL, which includes my username to get a production ready GraphQL endpoint. Or also I can introspect it locally, which I'll be doing now. So just copy paste this endpoint and go to Chrome. Then you can see an instance of the GraphQL playground has been generated. And this is using the schema that we just created. And no, it's only avail available locally. So if you want to use your GraphQL API in a production app, make sure to use the other endpoint that was generated in your terminal. In here, we can basically explore the schema that we already saw. So we saw the schema in VS Code. You can also find the schema here, seeing my query root entry, all these fields. You can see you can expand the address to get more information. Or we can just use the Explorer and start doing, running the query. So let's get all the customers and their ID and their name. And then, of course, we can also expand it with more information, like getting the address and so forth and so forth. So this is pretty cool. We can import one REST API endpoint and create a GraphQL schema for it. But we can also uh, get more API endpoints in here. In example, an API that gets one specific customer. So going back, we go to Postman. You can see with this endpoint to get customers. We can also get just one customer. So this returns the information of just one customer with just one address. We can also take this REST API endpoint and using steps and import curl, 
close this down. Let's step in, import curl again. And I'll use this endpoint, which has a parameter. It will run, it will import, and you see it created a second directory called curl 0. And later on, I'll be showing how you can name these different directories. In our index GraphQL file, you can see the curl one file directory has also been included there. And in here, our types has been generated. So you can see an address, orders, entry. And then you can see it has generated this one for one specific, one specific path. But we can do the same thing uh, for the API endpoints. So let's rename this maybe get customer. ID, and you can see it takes parameter. So let's say it takes the parameter ID, which is an integer, which let's just say it's an ID, so it can be an integer and string. Uh, and then we can write this down like this. So now it's become dynamic. So maybe just get this query in here and the other file. So we have my query. Let's just have get customer by ID. We can also try and rename this get customer. List, something like this. So now we have actually two um, two queries defined that are both using the same REST API endpoint. And just delete this one as we don't really need it. It's a very nice way to iteratively build upon your REST API um, that has been transformed to a GraphQL API using Stepson. So we've imported uh, the first REST API endpoint for customers. Then we imported the second one, which gets a specific customer. And you can see they're both returning the same type as if we would go to Postman, this also returns an array. So typically most endpoints that will get one specific customer would return an object, but it really depends on your API. So they have the same return type, meaning we don't have to retype all our fields. And now we can just run steps and start again to deploy our new schema. And this will also use compile time to check if there are any errors in the schemas that we've, uh, we're trying to upload to steps in. All looks fine. So if we would be going to our example here, let's refresh it to make sure that we have the most complete schema. You can see we have now two queries, get customer by ID and get customer list. And we can use this query from the GraphQL playground. But as I promised you, there are also ways to rename um, to rename the REST API endpoints that you are pulling into your project. So if we would go back to Postman, instead of using this mock API, we can also get a real life API, just the API from Practical Dev. We send a request to this one. You can see it gets us an array of articles. And this REST API endpoint is something we can also import into our project. So let's close steps and start. I run steps and import curl again. And this time we'll be using uh, different flags. So let's see which flags are available by adding the help flag. You can see you can give it a name, which will be the subfolder. You can see you can also give some path params, which we won't be doing now. You can also see you can give it a prefix. So imagine importing multiple APIs that might have the same type. A prefix will help you there because it will make sure that no duplicate types are created because if you have duplicate types, GraphQL will no longer function properly. Or you can also give the query name and the query type. So for this one, we'll be using steps and import curl again. We'll be giving our practical dev um, REST API endpoint. And let's just say we want to give it a name. It'll be dev go. Let's say we want to give it a query name which will be this, get the dev to articles. And then we can also give it a query type. Could be something like, this shouldn't be there. Let's give it a query type as well, which can be dev to article. So this will start importing the practical dev API. The query name, I uh, see I missed something there. It should have two dashes. Now it starts importing the practical dev API. You can see it only took, well, maybe not even a second. 
Uh, and you can see a new directory has been created, which is called DevTop. So instead of curl, which is the basic naming, we added a new name by adding it to the CLI. And our index GraphQL file has also taken this file and adds the GraphQL schema to the GraphQL API. If we go in this file here, you can see all the types are generated again, including nested JSON types. And also my query has a different name. And my query also has a different response type. And we've named these things by using the CLI. And you can imagine if you're using steps and import curl to import different REST API endpoints, you can use these flags in order to make sure all the names are correctly. Otherwise, you have to do them by hand, as we did in the first step. And now the only thing to deploy this to the cloud is again running steps and start. To deploy this new schema to our GraphQL API as well and make it available within certain seconds. You can see here my deployed prediction endpoint is also there, which I can query using curl or from any other GraphQL client that you might be using in your front-end project. Or we can go back to the GraphQL playground, which is running locally. We refresh this one. The devtoto query will also be there. So get devto articles. You can maybe get some articles with a description. Oh, let's click it. And then maybe a title. This whole thing. Run it. So this will call the practical dev API using GraphQL. So they only expose the REST API, but now using Stepsem, we can use it with GraphQL. And of course, you can add more fields like a slug or maybe a backlist, like all sorts of fields that are supported by practical dev. So this takes all these fields from the REST API endpoint and transforms it into GraphQL. And of course, we've implemented some caching. So the same request within a couple of seconds won't be refetched. Instead, we'll just use the cached, the cached version. And then the nice part here is you can iteratively build upon these schemas. You can even say, let's add a new file, which is something like combined.graphql. And this thing you could say, maybe you want to add a, another query. Um, and here you can combine certain fields. So you could say we have a query that gets API, gets information from DevTo and then combines with customers. But this is something we'll be covering in other videos that we have. For now, just enjoy how to import new REST API endpoints using steps and import curl, and then use GraphQL SDL in order to make changes. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and also follow along steps and. Make sure to go to the links in this description where you can find the complete example of this code that we host on GitHub. So thanks a lot, and I hope to see you soon again.